friends, and welcome to episode 348 of Good Luck High Five. That's right. You're listening to a podcast that's for you if you play Magic the Gathering, whether you're sitting at home jamming some arena or you're heading out to your, your local game store for this weekend's pre-release. Woo-hoo! We are here for you with our very special Throne of Eldraine rules episode. Yes, I'm one of your hosts, Maria. I'm another one of your hosts, Megan. And before we dive into the rules, a quick thank you to everybody who supports us on Patreon.com slash GLHF magic that's right coming up this thursday is our patron only stream from 6 to 8 p.m central it's going to be a great time it's patrons only we're gonna play some flavor text theaters maybe we'll do some drafts maybe we'll do some pictionary who knows the world is our oyster exactly and if you want to get in on sweet benefits like that there is no other way than becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash glhf magic it's so easy and we're ever so grateful to bring you things that are useful to you every week of your life some weeks more than others (laughs) this week i think in particular uh, with our rules episode and thank you to cardkingdom.com head on over to cardkingdom.com slash glhf to buy anything you need in your magical life perhaps it's a box of throne of eldraine draft with your friends yo yeah you're getting ready you're ready for this new standard season oh absolutely are you gonna head out to one of those um players Players Championship? Players Tour Qualifiers. Players Tour Qualifiers. Still called Thank the PTQ. You. That's right. <laughs> Head out to a Players Tour Qualifier. You need some standard cards. Yeah. Order them from Card Kingdom. All right. So uh, shall we dive deep into the show? Yes, we shall. Shall we b- put that pie in the oven? Let's. Shall we lock that lady in the tower? Why are we the villains? <laughs> You know what they say. Maria always takes the opportunity to whip the mice. Hey, everybody, it's time for our rules episode for Throne of Eldraine. And for that, we need to welcome someone very special. Judge Rob is here. Hi. Hi, Judge Judge Rob. Rob, How's Uh, it going? Not too bad. It's been a busy and exciting month in the judge world. Yes. We have our transition to the Judge Academy happening in a couple weeks. Yeah. Uh, it, October 1st, we will be under new management. It's All the right. same management. It's <laughs> it's almost the same group of people that are in charge of the judge community. We All right, just, then. Wizards of the Coast is not providing as much financial backing, and so we're taking in dues. Well, yeah. um, I'm excited for you to meet your new old boss. Yeah. yeah <laughs> it, it's it's me. Oh. Uh, like, uh, I'm moving from being a regional coordinator. Uh, so I'm, I'm the regional coordinator right now of the USA North region, and I'm a level three judge. And in a few weeks, I will no longer be the regional coordinator of USA North, which will be dissolved and folded into the Midwest region. The community coordinator for that will be Eric Levine. And I will be changing over to be on the advisory board of Judge Academy. All right. Okay. Just a shift of gears. That's a a solid update. So Judge Rob is here to tell us about the mechanics of the set um, and any rules interactions as well as any specific card notes. Yep. Um, But you always like to start us off with a little PSA. A little PSA. Uh, So one thing I've seen a lot from this set online is people who... So Throne of Eldraine is a a high fantasy fairy tale set, right? And there's lots of fairy tales, and everybody has their favorites, and everybody has their least favorites. And everybody likes things and doesn't like things. It's a great way to sum up humanity. Yeah, pretty much. (laughs) And so this this is a geek hobby. There's... There's not a lot writing on it. This isn't world peace. This isn't, you know, (laughs) this isn't whether or not we, you know, warm up by two degrees and then I'll die. This is this is we're playing a game about wizards and dragons and stuff. And so the thing is, people are going to like things in different ways and for different reasons than you. People are going to like the fact that there is an Elsa card. I'm not one of the people who's super excited about the Elsa card, but I'm excited that other people get to be excited about it, that these cards exist to make people happy. So if somebody's excited about something, if somebody says, you know, I I really, really love that I get to whip mice. Uh, Who would say such a thing? What right? kind of monster mad. would right. talk about that? But yeah. you don't get to call them a monster. They get to be happy. <laughs> and you get to be happy that they're happy. I'm really happy that Maria can whip mice. Yes. Hey, thank you for understanding, Rob. Right? That's, that's a really and, big need I have. Oh, I, I don't understand it. <laughs> but... <laughs> But I'm happy that you are happy. <laughs> fair, fair. All right, so, then. So p- when other people are excited, don't step on their excitement and crush it. Be, be excited that they're excited and just say, that's cool. I bet that I bet that you don't like things that I like. 
and that's fine. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's legit. And in a set with food, I think a good note about not yucking people's yums mm, is very yes, relevant. Do not yuck people's yums. <laughs> uh, so this set has a lot of stuff going on that's returning. Yeah. Uh, a couple yeah. of things that are returning just they came back in M20. And some some players might skip core sets, so I wanted to remind on a couple things that were reintroduced to the core set and are coming back again in this set. Uh, notably, protection. Uh, protection was evergreen, was around for a while. If you took a couple of years off and then came back, you're fine. If you started within the last two years, you might have never seen a card with protection because up until M20, they just had stopped doing it because it's a bunch of nonsense. <laughs> uh, so protection, uh, Archon of Absolution, a white and three for a three two Archon with flying. It has protection from white and it says creatures can't attack you or a planeswalker you control unless their controller pays one mana for each of those creatures. And the protection, the Archon reminds you this creature can't be blocked, targeted, dealt damage, enchanted, or equipped by anything white. And you might see ones that don't have that reminder text on them. So Damage has four things. Judges, I tend to use a mnemonic for it. Uh, D-E-B-T. Debt. Yes, debt. Damage from that thing is prevented. Enchanting and equipping from that thing can't happen. If you are already enchanted or equipped by something, it falls off. And that has, if it has that quality. And you gain protection. Uh, blocking by things of that quality can't happen. And targeting by things of that quality can't happen. Um, in two-headed, so uh, the Archon can't be... It can't be blocked by white creatures, you can't be targeted or damaged by white things, and can't have white equipment, which there's a couple of in the set, or one of in the set, uh, attached to it. The the other thing, uh, Archon, I wanted to call out, it says when something attacks you, if you're playing two at a giant this weekend and you have an Archon of Absolution, they can still attack your teammate without paying the tax, which is going to come up a bit. Oh, yes. Because <laughs> uh, this is a great creature and you'll probably play it in your deck if you're playing white. Excellent nice. reminder. Yeah. yeah. Uh, colored artifacts. I mentioned that there's colored equipment. And for the last couple sets, we've started to get since uh, War of the Spark. And I'm going to stop reminding on this probably after this set. We will have colored artifacts, though. They've decided they're evergreen. They're going to show up all the time. So Wishclaw Talisman here. Uh, black and one for an artifact. Wishclaw Talisman enters the battlefield with three wish counters on it. One tap and remove a wish counter from it to search your library for a card, put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. An opponent gains control of Wishclaw Talisman. Activate this ability only during your turn. Wishclaw Talisman is a black card, and it's an artifact. It's not an enchantment. Uh, so if you look at the history of magic, there have been very, very few colored artifacts, but they're basically happening in every set now. If you skip for a little while and came back, you'll be surprised by this, but it's cool because it's an actual monkey's, monkey's paw <laughs> that, you know, gives you a wish, gives your opponent a wish, it's and then gives spooky. you a wish. I wish yes. that it would be like, you can go get whatever card you want out of your deck, but then you have to light it on fire. <laughs> mm. Mm. That would be a true monkey's paw scenario. It'd be, it'd be a monkey's paw scenario for sure for people that don't have money. But it'd be, <laughs> what it is, you're taxing the poor and not the rich. If wow, you've got all the cards you in go, the world. Maria. Yep. Uh. <laughs> um, I did want to note for Wishclaw Talisman, it's a little unusual. It says you can activate this ability during your turn. Most things like this say only when you could play a sorcery. So you can... Activate the talisman. If there was a way to say untap it in response, you could untap it and then tap it again. Uh, maybe something like manifold key from M20. You could get two wishes from it right away. It's a possibility as All long right. as it's on your turn. Uh, this set also has something that we haven't seen in a while, which is non-basic lands at common with basic land types. Oh, I hadn't thought about that, but you're right. Yeah, we haven't had... Uh, the last time that they did something similar to this was actually uh, back during Miss Vale Plains land, which was... I think that was Lorwyn Block again. This is just Lorwyn 2, by the way. If, if, you, wow. if you haven't been playing since Lorwyn, nothing has changed. This is exactly the same as Lorwyn, <laughs> as Lorwyn and Shadowmoor. Like, Great. That's what I was wanting to return to anyway. I mean... There were a lot of good things about Lorwyn and uh, Lorwyn Block and about Shadowmoor Block. Um, Eventide was kind of bad, but the rest of it was pretty good. Excellent. Uh, so Gingerbread Cabin here. Uh, Gingerbread Cabin is a for land forest. It As a forest, it taps to add green. It has that in reminder text. And it says Gingerbread Cabin enters the battlefield tapped unless you control three or more other forests. So if you have three other forests before it comes out, then it will enter untapped. Uh, and it says when it enters the battlefield untapped, create a food token. Uh, which we'll talk about that under new mechanics in just a little bit. Uh, but that's an artifact that'll let you eat it for some life. And 
the the thing with gingerbread cabin it's fetchable for things that care about basic land types so if you have a if you have say a land from zendikar that could fetch for a forest you can fetch gingerbread cabin. so if it says find a basic land what about that uh no okay because it, it's not basic it doesn't have basic in the type line <laughs> so you can only play four of this in your deck it's not basic everybody <laughs> yep it's not basic ginger it, it doesn't matter that it's, it's not ordering that yeah. psl yep it's gingerbread, not pumpkin. Okay. So it's definitely better. Uh, so this also has this weird enter the battlefield thing going on with it. And there's a bunch of things that will check before it enters the battlefield, whether or not you have a certain number of other lands, which encourages you to play a bunch of that land type to make sure that you that you unlock that ability. And gingerbread cabin will count other gingerbread cabins. So Ooh. if you have three gingerbread cabins and you play a fourth, it'll come out untapped. Oh, because weird. they're okay. forests, right? Yeah. And so it yeah. cares about the forest pipeline. Okay, that makes sense. Yep. Um, something that's come up once before, which is equipped with a special quality. Uh, so Steel Claw Lance uh, is red black for a equipment. Equipped creature gets plus two plus two. Equip knight one. Equip three. So if you equip something that isn't a knight, you pay three. If you equip something that is a knight, you pay one. Nice. nice. Yeah. And it's pretty relevant in a knight's deck to get plus two plus two it's pretty relevant in any deck to get plus two plus two yeah so the the steel claw lance is pretty great we've seen it before on the black blade reforged it had equip legendary creature yep. or equip oh, yeah or legend yes 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 uh, and there are two cards that say equip knight in this set and they will probably continue with this kind of stuff going on so i, I may like or may it. not note it yeah. yeah it's pretty great um it encourages the theme pretty strongly while still being a generically useful card yeah great which is that's the thing that i like um there, there's also a thing, a bunch of things that trigger on drawing your second card for the turn. Uh, I like it. Yeah. Uh, it encourages you to draw cards, which is the best thing you can do. <laughs> yep. I don't know why yep, you're yep, messing yep. around with that. So Iron Crag Pyromancer costs red and two. She is a zero four uh, creature human wizard. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, Iron Crag Pyromancer deals three damage to any target. Now I can oh. win just by drawing cards. Yep. And by playing Thank red. Goodness. <laughs> yep. And so the, the big deal with Iron Crag Pyromancer is the game tracks how many cards you've drawn in the turn. So it isn't two cards since she's entered the battlefield. So if you draw your card for turn, play Iron Crag Pyromancer, and then play Opt, which says draw a card on it. You're good. It'll trigger Iron Crag Pyromancer. Nice. If you play Opt first, then play her, and then play Divination to draw two cards, she won't trigger because you've already drawn two cards before her. And so th this is relevant. It will see the total number of cards you've drawn, regardless of whether it was around. It just knows. It checks with the game and says, how many cards total this turn? I, I know that I didn't exist before. It's fine. But I just need to know. I just want to know. Yeah. I, oh, Let what, me what see your records. Yeah. yeah. So let's look at some of the mechanics that are returning. Let's take a look at some of the mechanics that are new with Throne of Eldraine. Yeah. We have the big one. The, the one that has a new frame that people are super excited for and that people were very confused by because they didn't release the rules right away when they were spoiling cards. Yes. Yeah, that, that was is, weird. It was, yep, super it was weird. very weird. I think it was actually cool uh, yeah. because that like, that builds up hype and yeah. lets people speculate Everyone's on like, how does this work? Yeah, and then a bunch of people are like, I figured it out, which makes them excited, which is good. <laughs> uh, so Bone Crusher Giant here has adventure. He, he is a red and two for a 4-3 giant. That says, whenever Bone Crusher Giant becomes the target of a spell, Bone Crusher Giant deals two damage to that spell's controller. Gross. It's a big boy. Yeah. He is a big burly dude for fairly cheap. He's about to step on this knight. Yeah. And he's totally about to stomp this dude. Speaking of stomp, <laughs> um, he down in his text box is a second text box off to the side. Stomp. Red and one. Instant. Adventure. Damage can't be prevented this turn. Stomp deals two damage to any target. Okay. Nice. Yeah. So like a planeswalker, this card doesn't explain what the heck it's doing at all. So you get the choice when you go to cast it. You can cast Bone Crusher Giant or you can cast Stomp. If you're casting it from your hand, you get to do this. Or if you're given the option to cast it from somewhere else, say, cast a card off that you exiled off the top of your deck with Chandra. Right. Uh, you get to choose which one that you're going to do. And if you cast Stomp, then Stomp goes in an adventure and goes to the exile zone after it resolves. And the then it sits there in exile and you're allowed to cast Bone Crusher Giant from exile then to come back from the adventure is the, the short way to describe it. It went off on a little adventure, stomped something, and now it's here to yep. be on the battlefield like here yep. I am. Exactly that. Um, and some things will care about that adventure subtype, like Lucky Clover. It's an artifact for two mana. 
When you, whenever you cast an adventure, instant or sorcery spell, copy it. You may choose new targets for the copy. Oh, that's oh, fun. Wow. I want to draft an adventure deck. Yeah. And like Lucky Clover is an uncommon and it will pay you off because yep. the adventures are all really good. They're all two for ones. And there, it's just like drawing. If if you draw stomp and cast stomp, it's just like drawing another card named Bone Crusher Giant. Yeah. It's which excellent. Is, yeah. Which is really excellent. And so the the things that you need to know about adventures, though, is they have to resolve to go to exile. So the spell gets countered. Or if the spell's target becomes illegal and it fails to resolve. So stomp has to any target. So if you target a creature and they sacrifice that creature or that creature gains protection, then stomp isn't going to resolve, which means it goes to the graveyard. And that means you don't get to cast Bone Crusher Giant from exile. No adventure for you, Giant. Correct. The adventure was not successful. Uh-oh. Uh, while this card is on the stack, it is adventure. If It is the adventure card, stomp, if you're casting stomp. If you are casting Bone Crusher Giant, it's just a Bone Crusher Giant in the stack. So, for instance, I could not essence scatter your stomp. Correct, because it's not a creature spell in the stack. Note also, it's only Bone Crusher Giant in every other zone. So, if you if you have a card that says search your library for an instant, you can't search for stomp because in your library it's not an instant; it's just a Bone Crusher Giant. Or if you have something that's like, oh, you need this many instants and sorceries in your Correct. graveyard. It does we, not count. Yes, which we will talk about later. Oh, uh, <laughs> much to my chagrin. Well, <laughs> I mean, it's unclear. Every other card like this that they've ever done is all the types I and think all it's other a, zones. I'm going to go on yep. record. I think it's a little bit counterintuitive if I was searching my yep. library for an instant. I would think that I would be able yep. to find this. Yep, and that's why they moved it off of the actual type line and gave it its own special uh, little I hidden see. type line. Okay. Yeah. So that, that way you can say, well, it's not on the type line. It's, that type line applies everywhere else, just okay. like double-faced cards. And so the, the thing with this is you also have to exile to its effect. Um, at the time that you finish resolving stomp. And so the adventure thing exiles itself as part of the adventure effect. Some things will instruct you to exile it otherwise or give you the option to exile it otherwise. A Feather the Redeemed uh, gives you the option to exile instant sorcery spells that target your creatures. And if you exile it to Feather, it's not on an adventure. It's exiled to Feather instead. That's so, so un- weird. In exile, it knows. It's like I'm yeah. on an adventure, and it's yes. like, no, never mind. I'm not on the adventure. Yeah, yeah no, no, no. Fe- feather, feather got me. Yeah, I, I, so, I'm gonna come back to your hand. This it's angel cool. snatched yeah. me. Yeah, we're, we're cool. We're cool. It's okay. So, you, for instance, yes. Feather exiles it. I can't just cast it from Feather's exile as Correct. a creature. Correct. Okay. Um, it also has to be exiled to the adventure specifically. So, if you have an adventure card in your graveyard, and it gets exiled by something, um. It didn't go on the adventure to be exiled, <laughs> so you can't cast Bone Crusher Dang Giant. it, I can't cheat? Yeah. I can't cheat my adventure yes. into happening? Uh, my suggestion is take your adventure cards and pull them out separately from other things that are in exile. And your opponents will remember whether or not something went on an adventure, <laughs> because they'll remember whether or not they got stomped. And they'll have the little, right, like the one of the card. tokens, yeah. essentially. Yes. There's a little like a on an adventure token. So use that. You should get one basically in every pre-release kit, um, statistically. It's going to be the, one of the most common things that you can open up. Great. Um, and there are things that say that refer to creature cards with an adventure. And those care whether or not something has an adventure. And they will also care if a copy has an adventure. So if you have a creature that has an adventure on it and copy it, that copy still has an adventure like tucked hidden inside your copy card for the purposes of things that care about creatures that have adventures. Oh, really? It's weird. Yeah. Wild. Um, okay. And so, yep. Wow, that's a lot of rules. There's a lot of stuff packed into this mechanic. Uh, It is basically they took like 90% of the complexity and hit it in the rules. And that's fine. The cards look clean and elegant and cute. They tell stories. And that's what you really want. So. All right. So next up, we've got Adamant. Yeah. There's one other line. Oh, okay. If the person that cast the adventure spell or that controls the adventure spell while it resolves is the one who gets to cast that creature from exile. This doesn't seem relevant. We'll talk about that in a little bit when we okay. get to it. Wow. Okay. All right. Um, so the adamant mechanic. Uh, adamant is a keyword, or sorry, is an ability word. It's in italics. You can ignore it if you want. It's just to help you find cards and talk about adamant as a mechanic, really. It doesn't have any rules meaning. They tell you exactly what they do. Um, so once in future here, green and three, instant. Return target card from your graveyard to your hand. Put up to one other target card from your graveyard on top of your library then exile once in future. It has adamant. If at least three green mana was spent to cast this spell, instead return those cards to your hand and exile once in future. 
Nice. Cool. Yep. Okay. So the the way that adamant works is it counts the the actual mana that you spent to cast the adamant spell and looks at how many of a particular color you spent. If it's a colored card, like Once in Future, it counts the color of that card. So if you spend three green mana on Once in Future, it will give you the adamant bonus. If it's a colorless adamant card, it's just three of the same, whatever that the same is, whether that be three red for your artifact creature or three green, as long as you spent three of the same color of mana. So this makes your land drops relevant. This makes the mana that you tap relevant. And the other thing to note, copies of spells, you didn't pay any mana for them, generally. So because nothing was spent on the copy, they won't get the adamant, adamant bonus. It isn't a thing that's copied. Uh, so if you copy, if you play once in future and twin cast it in response, you will only get the first portion, portion of it. For instance and sorceries that, are, that have adamant, they always have this do his thing, stop. Ignore the first half of this, change it, put some other words in there. Uh, so like once in future, you had to read the whole card to know exactly where your cards are going from it. Uh, that me makes them a bit wordy. If you see the word adamant buried in that text somewhere, you're probably going to have to read the whole card and maybe even twice to figure out what's going on with it. So. Well, yeah. fairly straightforward, all things yeah. considered. Yeah. Generally, really straightforward. We mentioned food tokens. Uh, so this is the weirdest food token. Have you looked at this one? Those no, are what curvy are these bananas. Curly bananas. Yeah, that's. Uh, I don't like it. It's, it probably shows up here, and th those are curly bananas. Um, <laughs> Why? They're, they're not fun. No, they're very fun. I have no idea how to eat them. Um, how do you peel them? No, the same way you peel a normal banana. You start from the you start from the point pointy end here. You pop it, and then you just peel it back. Gross. And you come around in a spiral, and then you get the banana wrapped around your arm. <laughs> Appeal. I don't like that. That's too mad. <laughs> um, so sorry. <laughs> Digression. Food tokens. Yeah. Um, so a lot of things in this set create food. And I'm going to talk about Gilded Goose here. It's a 0-2 for single green. Creature bird. Flying. When Gilded Goose enters the battlefield, create a food token. Uh, green one tap to create another food token. Green tap and sacrifice a food. Add no, one no, mana just, of any color. Just tap and sacrifice. Oh, sorry. Tap and sacrifice a food. My bad. Add one mana of any color. So... The food token that created, it's a token with specific characteristics, like gold, like treasure, like clues. Uh, food tokens are named food, and they have two taps, sacrifice this, gain three life. They're artifacts with a subtype food. And so Gilded Goose will eat any food, uh, including food Classic tokens. Classic goose. <laughs> like a regular goose. Yeah, just like a regular goose. He'll eat his own eggs, uh, like this golden oh. egg here. Uh, it's a two-cost artifact, artifact food. When Golden Egg enters the battlefield, draw a card. One tap and sacrifice it. Add one mana of any color. Two tap and sacrifice Golden Egg. You gain three life. Uh, the two physical food cards, uh, Ginger Brute and Golden Egg, both have the three tap sacrifice gain three life, just like the normal food tokens do. And there's a lot of things that create food. There's a lot of things that spend food. There's a lot of things that care about just artifacts in general in this set. So you're going to get a lot of value out of creating and eating food. Just like real life. Yep. Yeah. I feel like the value Lots I get value. from eating yep. food is pretty high. Yep. <laughs> it keeps you alive. Nice. That's the source of all of your powers. Yeah, accurate. Accurate. So there's going to be a lot of food running around. Um, sometimes you eat it. Sometimes your things eat it. Uh, yeah. You only get the life if you do the three tap and or two tap and sacrifice thing, though. If something else sacrifices the food, like the goose eats it to make mana, you don't get life. <laughs> I the, want a goose to let go next to I'm going to eat it to make mana. Yep. I mean, that's, yeah. it's a weird card. Let's get into some card-specific notes because mm. there's going to be some tricksy cards that you might run across mm -hmm. at your pre-release, and we want you to be prepared. There really are. Be prepared. I was also thinking of that song. Yeah. Were you thinking right. of that song, Rob? Well... Sort of. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you can give travel preparations. Oh, okay. Uh, well, yeah. that's fair. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. fair. It's a two for one that kills your opponent. And that's, that's <laughs> uh, so, card specific notes. I'm going to start with some rares, uh, some mythics specifically. Harmonious Archon. Harmonious Archon costs white, white four for a four or five Archon with flying. Apparently, there aren't angels in this plane. And so, yeah. when they sub out angels, they sub in. Our spirit angel. I like mean, this, look at this like an elk, giant elk angel. Elk angel. Yeah, it's yeah. like a. Why isn't this an avatar? Like, I don't know. Uh, That's a good point. So, uh, so it's a four-five flyer. It says non-archon creatures have base power and toughness three-three. 
That's your creatures, your opponent's creatures, everything is a 3 3. <laughs> when Harmonious right. Archon enters the battlefield, create two 1 1 white human creature tokens. So three threes. Dang. Yes. Uh, when something says base power and toughness like this, it changes the numbers in the lower right to 3 3. Uh, that's a, that, that if you treat it like that, you'll get the right results. This means that other power toughness influencing effects apply on top of it. If you have something that says creatures you control get plus two plus oh, that'll apply on top and you'll end up with five threes. Uh, same with equipment that apply on top of it. Same with counters. Same with counters. Counters will apply on top of this as well. And this only applies while the Archon is on the battlefield. <laughs> so Not forever. Not forever. And so it doesn't, it doesn't permanently change things that come before or after it. It's just while it's there, it makes everything equal. Yeah, like all these little woodland creatures in the art. Yes. They're all 3-3s three right now. Yes, uh, and you're in trouble because a bunch of 3-3 three, three squirrels is a problem. Oh, yeah. all right. Get uh, at me, squirrel And it has a, a wonderful flavor text of first among equals. Yeah, that's great. Because <laughs> everything's a 3-3, three, three, and in a world of 3-3s, three, three, a 4-5 is king. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So uh, I want to talk about Oko, Thief of Crowns. This guy's tricksy and wonderful and also incredibly powerful, and I don't know why he exists, but, you know. <laughs> we'll find out, yeah. probably. Uh, blue-green uh, blue one for a four-loyalty legendary planeswalker, Oko. Plus two, create a food token, which, as we mentioned, can be sacrificed to gain two tap and sacrifice, gain three life. Plus one, target artifact or creature loses all abilities and becomes a green elk creature with base power and toughness three three. He's just running around the woods making things elk. Yep. You're an elk. Yep. <laughs> You're, an, You're elk. an elk. Yep. Uh, I think I think I read a fairy story about people getting turned into elks all the time, just randomly. Oh yeah, yeah. definitely. Ogos. We all know that that fairy tale. Yep. He also is minus five. Exchange control of target artifact or creature you control, and target creature an opponent controls with power three or less. I get it. Yep. He's he's a trickster fairy, and he'll he'll swap his food for whatever the heck you have. Uh, the things to know about his elk ability, which is the relevant one for being weird, is, uh, well, and also about his minus five. So his elk ability keeps the summoning sickness status of whatever you turn into an elk. So he makes food. The next turn, you elkify your food. And it doesn't have summoning sickness because you've controlled it since the beginning of your turn. Yeah. So you get to attack with your elk food, uh, which is no longer food, note, because... It's it, an elk now. It loses an, an all elk abilities. is a creature. Uh, because, yeah, because it became a green elk creature. Um, so it stopped being an artifact because it just said it becomes this thing and doesn't say in addition to being its other types. Uh, his minus five, he exchanges control um, and the the control exchange target creature and opponent controls with power three or less. They can boost its power to make the target illegal. And if that happens, the exchange doesn't happen. Also, an exchange has to have two things that are actually exchanged. So if you activate the ability and target your food token and their creature and you sacrifice your own food in response to your no. ability thinking you're clever, you need to, you, you don't get the exchange. You need to go back to school. You're not clever. Yeah. <laughs> yep. uh, it sounds clever and it's, it's, it does. It, it sounds really it does. clever, but an exchange requires both halves of the exchange. to be You there. played yourself. Yep. <laughs> so he's, he's very tricky and he has a lot of stuff going on and he does not remind you what food does. So if you need a reminder, you probably got a food token in one of your booster packs. Go take a look at it. Yeah. Yeah. Outlaw's Merriment. Oh, this card is bizarre. This card's incredible. I love it. Um, white, white, red one for an enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, choose one at random. Just roll a die. There's three options. Create a red and white creature token with these characteristics. Either three, one human warrior with trample and haste. So it's a ball lightning, that, or not, not a ball lightning, it's a spark elemental that doesn't die at end of turn. Or a 2-1 human cleric with lifelink in haste. Or a 1-2 human rogue with haste, and when this creature enters the battlefield, it deals one damage to any target. All good options. These are all great things. You don't know which one you're going to get. This cool. happens when the trigger goes on the stack. So you will know, and your opponent will know, what's going to happen when it resolves. Uh, if it's relevant to their life. Um, like they say they want to give themselves hex proof or something. Uh, so this, just roll a d6, one, two, three, four, five, six. You can also, if you have all three of the tokens and the backs are all the same, take all three of the tokens, shuffle them face down, and have your opponent choose one as a shell game to get you a random one. Cool. Which is nice. what I'm, I'm planning on doing a bunch. Wow, this card is absurdly powerful. I want to make a deck with it. Yeah. It's, it seems so fun. I think that it's less powerful than the than the army assembly one from 
Return to Ravnica. Ooh, oh, that yeah, one was you're so right. good, though. The one, that, the one that's like cumulative upkeep, make a 1-1 one, one yeah. Yeah. soldier. Like, make a 1-1, one, one, make two 1-1s. One, yeah. yeah, that make was Make 5 absurd. billion 1-1s. One, yeah. This gives you a bunch of free dudes, don't get me wrong. And, like, getting free 3-1s that don't die at end of turns with trampling haste is good. And, like, a 1-2 that just gets to ping a random thing, that's great. But, and it's going to blow people out. But yeah. It's also super weird. This next card um, comes in, <laughs> Questing Beast, as yes. one of the cards with uh, so many words on it that make it like, this card will be relevant in standard. <laughs> the first three words are the important ones. Okay. The rest of them do a lot of complicated things for not a lot of return. So uh, Questing Beast here, it's green, green, two for a 4-4 four, four legendary creature beast. It has Vigilance, Death Touch, and Haste. Wow. Okay. If you're playing this as a creature, Pew. like if you took away the rest of the text, I would probably play this card. Like, oh, absolutely. So also it can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less. Is that all? Also, combat damage that would be dealt by creatures you control can't be prevented. Is that all? Also, whenever Questing Beast deals combat damage to an opponent, it deals that much damage to target Planeswalker that player controls. Is that all? It's yes, surprisingly, that, that, yes. Yeah, 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 it has all. three heads, three Keyword abilities and three trigger abilities. Oh, okay, abilities. that's cute. Like, that's the theme. Or three weird abilities. Uh, they aren't all triggered. Um, the things to note is, so I mentioned a while ago, protection uh, prevents damage from a source of that color. If you have protection from green, the damage from requesting beast can't be prevented. So protection doesn't stop it. So if you attack into a creature that is protection from green, they block. Questing beast will just kill it anyways. You know what's interesting to me is that that's a little weird because basically questing beasts ability that's written there is over is stomping on the ability of the protection yep why is that why it, doesn't the protection get to say no i'm in i'm well, the one that overrides you well protection says it like do this thing right yeah it prevent this damage questing beast says damage that we dealt by creatures you control can't be prevented and can't always beats can this thing can't happen <laughs> <laughs> you can't draw, players can't draw more than one card each turn. That that divination doesn't do anything, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, players can't activate abilities of artifacts they control. It does. It doesn't like stop some other parts of protection. Like yeah. this can't block something yeah, can, that yeah, has yeah. protection from green. Yeah. If they, okay. if they have a protection yeah. from a creature, they sure. get to walk into that creature and just walk past questing beast, which just lets them through. It's like, <laughs> yeah. What's your quest here? I shouldn't oh, even be asking. Uh, fine. Get, get, you're fine. Good. Goodbye. You're good. You're good. <laughs> bye you're, bye. You, you have a green card. It's this okay. is none of my business. Yep. Okay. Um, Interesting. The triggered ability from Questing Beast, uh, the third, the last ability of Questing Beast, will go on the stack, target a Planeswalker. They can do something in response to it. They can prevent the, uh, they can't prevent, or they can prevent the damage that would be dealt to their Planeswalker if they have a way to do that, because it's only combat damage that can't be prevented. Okay. So, uh, a lot of weird stuff going on with this card. Wow. Bang. When you've got three heads, you know, yep. life is going to get life weird. Life gets complicated. Yeah. Uh, that you're not wrong. Like, how many stomachs does Questing Beast have? Oh. I don't know. Wow. Right? Yeah, like one of Do one of, the like, throats. Because if, if they have three, if they have three stomachs, then one head could be like, I'm hungry. And the middle one's like, I just ate and I'm not. Or what if <laughs> the bad. middle one's head feeds like the right one's stomach? <laughs> Weird. <laughs> like yeah, exactly. It's like I a want weird, you to know like, I'm hungry, so can you eat it's something so you right need now? To eat something. Right. And do how many lungs and how many like esophageal tubes does it have? Yeah. Esophageal I don't know. tubes. We need like, like we need well, no, sorry. A, like yeah. an anatomical chart yeah, of we the testing beasts we do. Right. Does it all unify down through one through one breathing tube? Because that would mean that the pressure would be tripled on that breathing tube anytime that they all breathe in at once. Can they deal with that? I mean, oh, maybe it seems evolved. to be living a good life. Yeah, true. So, it's living its probably. best life. So it's probably yeah. smarter about its own biology than me. <laughs> so, uh, but we have Rankle, Master of Pranks here for our next card. Yes. Rankle, Master of Prankles. Let's go. Yep. Black, black two for a three, three legendary creature fairy rogue with flying in haste. I'm in. Whenever Rankle, Master of Pranks deals combat damage to a player, choose any number, which is a new template that we've never seen before, actually. You choose one, uh, uh, zero, one, two, or three of these modes. I read this card incorrectly when it when it first yeah. came out. Yes. I was like, "Wait, can I just choose seven? Yeah, you know, like, and no. they discard their hand. You know, no, what I no, mean? no. Yeah, each player discards a card. Each player loses one life and draws a card, or each player sacrifices a creature. So you can choose zero. You can choose no pranks. 
<laughs> uh, Why would you ever choose no pranks? I am no performing pranks. no pranks because, today. Because you have a card you like in your hand. Okay. You have you are at one life, <laughs> and your only creature is Rankle, Master of Pranks. In that case, no, no pranks. I'll choose no we're, pranks, We're please. good. I, I like the number of pranks that we're at, which is zero. <laughs> but you can choose up to three pranks. Okay. And these pranks will happen in the order on the card. <laughs> So, I love calling them pranks. Yeah, so option four: put a baby Ruth in a pool. <laughs> what? Just Caddyshack. Caddyshack. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Starring Chevy Chase and you know the most interesting man in the world yeah. and a bunch of other people. We watched Over the Top last night, starring oh, Sylvester Stallone. So good. It so is good. So good. Everybody. It is priceless a plus movie recommendation is, for yeah, you right there definitely watch it kid friendly no, okay yeah it is, it is. yeah all right anyways uh, so uh rankle does the things in order so if they have a card in their hand they will discard that card then they will lose one life and draw a card uh same with you if you have no cards in your hand you will discard no cards and then lose one life and draw a card uh you don't get to choose the order it's just going to happen in the order listed here and if Rankle is your only creature and you choose the sacrifice a cre- everybody sacrifices a creature prank, well, then Rankle pranked himself. Rankle! <laughs> uh, Rankle, no! You also put this on the stack, uh, and all pranks. the modes get chosen when this trigger goes in the stack, and so they will know which pranks are going to be happening. So if you have Rankle and another creature, they could kill your other creature to force Rankle to prank himself. Uh, oh, oh, no. Rankle, yep. get pranked. Yep. You know, sometimes it. pranks backfire. It's true. Yeah, accurate. It's true. Uh, the Great Henge. <laughs> uh, so this is a green green and seven for a legendary artifact. This spell costs X less to cast, where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. So you can, if you have a seven power creature, you get it for green green. It has tap. That's a cheap henge. That's a, that's a pretty cheap henge. I would pay that much for a henge. I would absolutely yeah. pay two for a henge. Yep. It taps to add green green, so it would be basically free. In that circumstance, it can tap the turn it comes out. It's pretty great. Tap to add green, green, and you gain two life. Uh, note that this is a mana ability. Your opponents can't respond to it. So if you have a great henge in the battlefield and they try to kill you, you can just gain two life. They really can't do anything about it. Last ability. Whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one, plus one counter on it and draw a card. That isn't a contingent thing. Creature comes out, trigger happens, they can kill the creature, and doesn't matter, you still draw a card. If the creature is something that can't have a counter placed on it for whatever reason, you still draw a card. So there's creatures that can't have counters put on them, like yeah. Tatterkite. So. All right. So, like, you're just going to draw a bunch of cards, gain a bunch of life, and your opponent really can't interact with you very well after that comes out. Nice. The greatest henge. Yes. The magic mirror. The magicest oh. mirror. It is the magicest mirror. Blue, 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 six Whoa. for a it's legendary a lot of magic. artifact. Yes, it's a lot of magic. The spell costs one less to cast for each instant and sorcery card in your graveyard. Uh, that is per card, and it doesn't count adventures. As we noted, adventures don't have the 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 little sidebar characteristic of anything mm-hmm. when they're in the graveyard. They're just the creatures that they are. The magic mirror says you have no maximum hand size. And at the beginning of your upkeep, put a knowledge counter on the magic mirror, then draw a card for each knowledge counter on the magic mirror. Ooh. This is not optional. (laughs) Megan's like, uh, hmm. But (laughs) also, yeah. Yes. Happiness is mandatory, (laughs) and so is drawing cards. You, Uh, if if the magic mirror has six counters on it and you have seven cards in your library, you put a counter on it and you draw seven cards. You pranked yourself. Yes. Uh, it, It is... Spoilers, you you wanted to get to that point. If you drew too many cards, yeah. you were doing something right. There is a Jason nice. play. Yeah. Banish into Fable. Oh, I played this in the Brawl event. Mm. It is a very difficult to comprehend card. It has a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, I have played it incorrectly a number of times. <laughs> <laughs> Blue, white, four for an instant. When you cast the spell from your hand, copy it if you control an artifact, then copy it again if you control an enchantment. You may choose new targets for these copies, so you can have up to three Banish into Fables if you have an artifact and an enchantment. Return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. You create a 2-2 white knight creature token with Vigilance. So, Banish into Fable makes three copies. It will bounce up to three things and make up to three knights. If the thing that it's targeting goes away before it resolves, you don't get a knight because it fails to resolve because its only target's illegal. 
So if you leave the Banish and a Fable all targeting the same creature, the first one will resolve, and then the other two won't make you any night tokens because the thing is gone. Gotcha. This card is absurd um, and limited. Are oh you God. kidding me? Yeah. My Ret God. Return three target permanents, make three night tokens. It's insane. Yeah. Nice. Wow. Uh, the other complicated blue-white gold card is Dance of the Mants. Uh, Dance of the Mants. Mants? Like a mansion. I mean, Dance of the Mants. Oh, okay, Dance of the Mants. Yeah. Okay, sure. Or the Praying Mantis. Dance <laughs> of the Mants. Yep. Blue-white X, sorcery. Return up to X target artifact and or non-aura enchantment cards, each with converted mana cost X or less, from your graveyard to the battlefield. Uh, if X is six or more, those permanents are four four creatures in addition to their other types. Somebody out there do this. Yes. I, I, it's going to happen. Uh, the, the payoff on this, like, it's eight mana. This is going to be a slow two for ones all the time format. You're going to cast this limited. You're going to make a couple of four fours. Um, <laughs> Sick. The uh, the and or just means that you get this group of things, artifact and or non aura enchantment cards. So they have to be artifacts and they have to be enchantments that don't have the word aura on them. And the what's the, its problem with auras? That's what I want. So the know. problem with auras is that if you put out an aura, you'd have to attach it to something. Oh, okay. And it could animate that aura as a creature, and creatures can't be attached uh, to things. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that that's one of my my comments here. If it's a creature and it's also an equipment, you can you can activate the equip ability. The game will let you do so. It will not attach to something. Be aware on arena. Yeah. You will probably get into the situation. Oh, I've got this equipment. Equip. Does nothing. Because we all know creatures shouldn't get attached. <laughs> yep, it's true. The, the game teaches you so many life lessons. It really does. I've learned a lot. It really, it really does. does. <laughs> and the other thing is this overrides the power and toughness of things. So if you have an artifact that is already a creature in your graveyard, you can target it with Dance of the, uh, of the Mance. Uh, when you do that, it'll return, and it'll be a 4-4 if you paid enough mana for it. So if it was naturally a 2-2, two -two, wipe that away, make it a 4-4. Four -four. This is also true for vehicles. So your vehicle, whatever power and toughness it shows down to the lower right, blow it up. Replace it with 4-4. Four -four. And is it a creature already or does it it's still a creature have to be crewed? Oh, okay. You can also still crew it and probably have it crew itself. This probably won't help you because crewing doesn't give you power and toughness. <laughs> crewing uses the power and toughness on the card. Yeah. So, which is now 4-4. Four -four. Which is now 4-4. Four -four. Okay. So uh, you, you probably don't crew your carriage again, but you could. Also, this is something you can do... I'd, have you tried crewing something with itself on Arena? I have um, not. No. No. Okay. So Rob's knows? like, new goal unlocked. <laughs> yeah. I, I do it in Commander every once in a while. It's I have a Commander vehicles deck with um with uh, King Makar the Gold Cursed. So, oh, that's cool. So every once in a while I just need to like tap my own things because I care about things being tapped. And so I'll, I'll like, I've had him crew a vehicle and then have that vehicle crew a bigger vehicle. Oh, I've yeah. definitely done the turducken. Yep. I love doing that. <laughs> be and, then, your guess, and then have be that vehicle crew itself just to make sure that it can't block. Weird life. <laughs> um, so Fae of Wishes is my next card. Blue and one for a creature fairy wizard. It's a one four with flying. Blue one and discard two cards. Return Fae of Wishes to its owner's hand. I don't care about that. I care about the adventure that you can go on called Granted. Blue and three, Sorcery Adventure. You may choose a non-creature card from, that you own from outside the game, reveal it, and put it into your hand. It's a wish. This is a better wish than most of the wishes. Granted. Yep. And so you, you, cast, you cast Granted, and in a tournament environment, Granted will get cards from your sideboard. So if you're playing this at the pre-release and you try to grant your wish, you have to choose something from the sideboard of your limited deck. You which can't is go over to the, the shop counter play. and buy yes. something. You, can, you cannot <laughs> and walk, cool. Yeah, you cannot. Or Karn. Like, yeah. It seems like a thing that I would wish for a lot. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of like really good wishes. I need a Wrath of God. That isn't in this I format. I wish for a Karn. Yeah. I wish for a Wrath of God. That's even worse than wishing to whip some mice. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I wish for a wrath of God. I wish for a Supreme Verdict. Yeah. Supreme Verdicts would be nice. Yeah. Uh, so Fires of Invention. Fires of Invention is red in three for an enchantment. You can cast spells only during your turn. Okay. And you can cast no more than two spells each turn. Okay. You may cast spells with converted mana costs less than or equal to the number of lands you control without ah. paying their mana costs. <laughs> oh, wow. what? So you get two free, up to two free spells a turn on your turn. 
Uh, Fires of Invention, when you cast it, will count itself and things cast before it in that turn. So if it's the first thing you cast on turn four, you get one more spell. Then you're done. And uh, otherwise, okay. this card is this card is crazy. Wow, right? I've never seen anything like it. Uh, it's like as foretold on speed. Like, <laughs> I, and as foretold, people found some really fun things to do with. Yep. Yeah, the as foretold's a modern card. This might slot into the as foretold deck in modern because it's huh. just the same card. It's just a duplicate copy of as foretold, which is pretty great. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Oh. Here we go. Happily ever after. White and two enchantment. When happily ever enter enters the battlefield, each player gains five life and draws a card. Congratulations, everyone. We're all friends here. <laughs> At the beginning of your upkeep, if there are five colors among permanents you control, and there are six or more card types among permanents you control and or cards in your graveyard, and your life total is greater than or equal to your starting life total, you win the game. Wow. That is a lot of conditions to yes. meet. Yes. So the, the condition is if your Tarmogriff is going to kill them anyways, and you have a bunch of life... So and, you're doing fine. Yep. And you have like a like red, blue, black, and uh, white Tarmogoyfs as well. Then, yeah, you win the game. <laughs> um, this is basically a group hug victory condition deck. They wanted a happily have after card that didn't do anything. <laughs> wow. Sick burn. <laughs> it, it, it's conceivable this will win a two at a giant match at the pre-release. Um, oh. Because yeah. it gives you and your two at a giant teammate a total of ten life and two cards for three yeah. mana. It gives them 10 life and two cards, but if you're planning on winning with Happily Ever After, pff, whatever. whatever, you can have it. <laughs> I don't care. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the creature color condition, there are creatures in standard that are all five colors. There's uh, that hex proof from Monocolored Sphinx. No, I don't remember it, but I believe you. It's like a seven cost yeah, five, I remember five it. from I remember it. Ravnica. niv Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's niv Mizzet as well. Um, you can't find this with Nif Miss It, so that makes it a little weird, but, I mean, you can <laughs> just play him. He's a good card. I wrote a preview article about this card, um, on Daily MTG, and another way you can do this is with the monocolored, uh, white card cycle that are, or, sorry, the split hybrid mana cards. Oh, yeah, 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 the hybrid cards are really good for this. Yeah. Because you can do this in a mono-white library just with the, with the hybrids that stretch out. They're, they're a wide band of power. Like, the 2 3 double striker is pretty good. Yeah, bad. I, I agree that some are way better than other ones for sure. Yeah. Um, oh, and the trigger condition. So it has this complicated trigger condition. Everything in that must be true before your upkeep starts in order for it to go on the stack. Okay. Then it must be true again as the trigger condition resolves for you to get the, for you to get the result. So they could exile your graveyard or destroy a permanent in response to the trigger and lock you out from becoming happily ever after. Rude. Sorry, you're going to be sad forever after. Yes, you, you will be sad. My turn. Um, Hushbringer. Which uh, somebody on Twitter called the ASMR fairy. <laughs> I just can't <laughs> unsee it now. The art is, is different. Oh, the art is gorgeous. I wish this, yeah. like... Uh, I wish this was on an instant or sorcery because I like these allegorical cards that yeah. like yeah. That, like tell a story in their art on an instant or sorcery. I want my creatures to look more like creatures. Yeah. So like I wish this was switched with with a really cool spell. Yeah. Uh, but Hushbringer is a white and one for a one two creature fairy flying lifelink. OK, that's fine. Creatures entering the battlefield or dying don't cause abilities to trigger. Uh, this is a torpor orb and also a whatever the heck the reverse torpor orb was. There, there is the little one three in standard that. Oh, Takatli Arnegard yeah. is mm -hmm. the first half of this. Yeah. Um, Hushbringer has it, it. It shuts down these t types of triggers and it shuts them down if it enters the battlefield with creatures at the same time, or it dies at the same time as creatures. Well, it, it will stop those triggers. So if there's something that puts all creatures from the graveyard onto the battlefield, Hushbringer will then turn off all the triggered abilities. What Hushbringer doesn't turn off is things that say this enters the battlefield with or as this enters the battlefield, make a choice. So like um, Sorceress Spyglass has it as this enters the battlefield. It's not a creature, but it could be entering as a creature due to Dance of the Mons. Dance of the Mans. <laughs> <laughs> Thank so you. Uh, if it's entering as a, as a creature with Dance of the Mans, it still says as this enters the battlefield. That's not a triggered ability. It's a replacement effect. So it still does its thing. Sick. So. Good reminder about yeah. that. Yep. Lockmere Serpent. Uh, black, blue, four for a 7-7 seven, seven Serpent. Flash, blue, sacrifice an island. Lockmere Serpent can't be blocked this turn. 
Dang. Yep. Black sacrifices swamp. You gain one life and draw a card. Dang. That's the better ability. Uh, black, blue, and exile five target cards from an opponent's graveyard. Return Lockmere Serpent from your graveyard to your hand. Activate this ability only any time that you could cast a sorcery. Andrew Dang. Brown, why do you do this to us? <laughs> Creating these blue deck finishers. It, it great. Yep, it's unstoppable. So the last ability is the fancy one. Um, it has black, blue, colon, so it only costs blue and black to activate. It says return five, exile five target cards from an opponent's graveyard. Your opponent needs five cards for you to target. If they only have four cards, you cannot return Lockmere Serpent. If they have five cards and you target all five of them and they exile one of them somehow, cool, Lockmere Serpent doesn't care. If it, As long as at least one of those cards is still there, it'll come back. But it needed those five to target. Okay. If they exile their whole graveyard, so there's no cards in their graveyard, then Lockmere Serpent's ability will be countered and it will stay in your graveyard. No, poor buddy. <laughs> yeah. So Lockmere Serpent's a weird guy. Yeah. Um, well, you know, a lot of serpents are. Yeah. It's also, so this is a Loch Ness monster, right? Yes. yes. You guys know the, the thing on this? N what? What do you mean? It has three activated abilities and 50 words of rules text. You counted? What? Okay, continue. Tree fitty. What about it? What? Oh, okay. <laughs> what? What? Uh, so this is, a, it's a long, long standing internet joke about, uh, um, it's a, from an episode of South Park from... 1999, so oh, 20 years ago. what? About the, the Loch Ness monster showing up and demanding its tree fitty. Oh, and this, for real, fits that joke? Yeah, it has three <laughs> activated abilities and 50 words of rules text. <laughs> oh my god. I have no idea how they did that, but... That is unbelievable. That's actually unbelievable. Yeah. Wow, and that's all the Loch Ness monster wanted was three fitty, huh? Yep, the, and it got it. It got, it got its wish. <laughs> Wow. Uh, this is also priced at $3.50 when Star City Games put it up for pre-order. Oh, my God. Wow. That's Why? An, that is an internet joke that I would, was <laughs> that, not that's familiar a with. deep cut internet joke. Wow. Yeah. Dang. Um, Oathsworn Knight. Oathsworn Knight, black, black, and one for a zero, zero creature human knight. It enters the battlefield with four plus one plus one counters on it. An arm, another arm, a leg, and another leg. Uh, <laughs> it attacks each combat of Fable. And if damage would be dealt to Oathsworn I Knight... While it has a plus one plus one counter on it, prevent that damage and remove a plus one plus one counter from it. <laughs> Funny. For those of you following along at home, I suggest that you go watch Monty Python. It's only a flesh wound. It's only a flesh wound. And he keeps attacking. Wow. Never stops attacking. I have, a, I have a question, though. How do people, like, put that together? Because to me, like, I didn't think about that. I didn't think, oh, it's obviously its arms and legs getting chopped off. I mean, it's four counters and I have four limbs. Like, it, Sure. Yeah. <laughs> and it's right, a, it's a right. black knight. Like, people yeah. wanted a black knight to be Monty Python okay. and the Holy Grail's black yeah. knight for forever. And this is exactly perfect. Okay. Um, so, th things to know. Um, no matter how much damage this guy takes, you'll remove one counter and prevent all that damage. However, if that damage can't be prevented, like, for instance, a questing beast hits Oathsworn Knight, you still will lose a counter. He doesn't care about whether or not the damage was successfully prevented. Uh, questing beast probably just kills this guy outright. Yeah. So... Um, also with stomp from the bone crusher giant that we talked what about. What about uh, death touch? Uh, death touch. The damage is prevented, so death touch doesn't kick in. It does not kill the, the oath sworn knight. Okay, interesting. So um, he's good against death touch. He's bad against like a couple random cards in this set. All right. And you can add more counters to regrow limbs on him. <laughs> It's a puzzle for you to try Gross to figure and out. Weird. Oh, yeah, sometimes he will end up with seven arms. <laughs> no, not no. cool. Uncomfortable. <laughs> yep. Uh, Thorn Mammoth. Thorn Mammoth is green, green, five for a six, six creature elephant with trample. And whenever Thorn Mammoth or another creature enters the battlefield under your control, Thorn Mammoth fights up to one target creature you don't control. Ah, this is played nice. in the Brawl event as well, yeah. and it's insanely it's good. It's incredible. Um, if you target a thing, you must fight it. It says up to one target. You can choose no targets, and then it won't fight anything. If you target something and they respond by pumping their creature, you, you still, still must. Gotta you fight have it. Oh no! Fight. You challenge it to a fight. Yep. You can't back out now. Yeah, the mammoths don't back down. It's oh like, no, they don't. Yeah, you they don't. said we were going to fight. Yeah. You so, said 3 p.m. behind the school, and here I am, Brad. Here yes. I am. Yep. And that. Brad will show up with a giant growth, and he will punch you in the face, and then wow. your elephant will die. Oh, uh, my childhood. Yep. And so be aware that 
uh, Arena and um, and MPGO will prompt you for targets, and then you can say no. You can decline targeting. Yeah. Do that if you don't want to fight. Otherwise, you're going to be locked in. Uh, covetous Urge. Uh, hybrid blue black, hybrid blue black, hybrid blue black, hybrid blue black. <laughs> Four hybrid it's blue very black mana elegant. symbols. Yeah, I, I need to figure out a w- better way to say this it, <laughs> it, it, because it's it, it's weird. We don't have a single symbol for this. They're yeah. this, they're the divided mana symbols. You can spend either a blue or a black for each of these mana symbols. So you can spend four black, four blue, two blue, two black. Uh, Covetous Surge. It's a sorcery. Target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non-land card from that player's graveyard or hand, and exile it. You may cast that card for as long as it remains exiled, and you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast this spell. Oh, we've seen things like this before. Just steal a card from them. You get to steal it from here or from there. If they don't have any cards in their hand, you still get to steal it from their graveyard. So this, I said I'd talk about adventures being cast from, a, from your opponent later. This is a card that lets you do it. So you covet a surge of your opponent, you choose a creature that has an adventure attached to it. If you cast the adventure, you exile that thing as the adventure resolves, and then you can cast the creature later. Or you could just choose to cast the creature up front, and then you just get a creature spell. The The other thing to note is that, that you may spend mana of any, is though or mana of any color effect on it, only applies to the first casting. So if you want to cast their, their oh, red sure. adventure, then it'll exile itself, and then you have to spend red mana to get the creature later. Okay. So... Uh, Covetous Surge does some weird things with adventures. Uh, you can, you can because it exiles the thing, you can't, uh, you, it, unlike most things, you get to cast either side from exile because Covetous Surge lets you do that because it says cast the thing. Normally, when something's on an adventure, you can only cast the creature side from exile. But this isn't on an adventure. It's exiled by Covetous Surge. Nice. Uh, and it's, yeah, it's weird with adventure spells. Drown in the lock. <laughs> Blue black for an instant. Choose one. Counter target spell with converted mana costs less than or equal to the number of cards in its controller's graveyard. Or destroy target creature with converted mana costs less than or equal to the number of cards in its controller's graveyard. Counts the number of things in their graveyard and determines what's legal for it to target. That means that if the number of cards in their graveyard changes during the, uh, during, uh, with this spell in the stack, it can end up with its target being illegal. They can pump their creature to get above it. Uh, or sorry, converted mana cost, not power. They can't pump their creature. They can change their creature to a copy of something with a higher converted mana cost. Or unlikely. They can um, exile things from their graveyard. Yeah, they can exile things from their graveyard in order to turn down their graveyard size so that you can't drown their creature underneath their graveyard. Turn down the graveyard side. It's too loud. Yeah. Yeah, turn down for the graveyard side. I love this art as well. Yeah. It's uh, gorgeous. It's gorgeous and super creepy because it's a yeah. wolf dragging you under yeah and so like they never had to come up for air you could sit and watch the water for an hour they don't care you can <laughs> still get drowned anyways rob just made it even creepier that's super creepy <laughs> <laughs> merfolk in this set are all about vengeance it's kind of unusual <laughs> <laughs> frogify oh cute blue and one uh for an enchantment aura Enchant creature. Enchanted creature loses all abilities and is a blue frog creature with base power and toughness 1-1. One, one. There's another similar card because there's two of these in this set. I don't know why. Kenrith's Transformation. Green and 1 for an enchantment aura. When Kenrith's tra- Transformation enters the battlefield, draw a card. Enchanted creature loses all abilities and is a green elk creature with base power and toughness 3-3. Three, three. The king got turned to an elk. It's true. Oh, king! And king so, they, like... But the king is getting turned to a frog in this one. Yeah. No, that's a prince. It's a, pr- a prince. Oh, sure. That's a Remember? prince. Sure. Makes frog sense. A prince becomes a frog, yeah. but a king, king becomes, becomes an elk. An elk. Yeah, okay, sure. Saul like, checks out. Yep. Math checks out. Uh, elks are bigger than frogs. Yes. Kings are better than princes. Yeah. I'm in. So, as mentioned before, 1-1 uh, one, one base power and toughness. Treat it as if the, the power toughness box in the lower right-hand corner says 1-1 one, one now. So... Buffs and counters will apply on top of that. Same with penalties. If you give it give it minus two, minus two, it'll kill the frog, but it won't kill the elk. Um, these also make it lose abilities, which is a little unusual. Basically, you set it to be this thing now. Future abilities can get added to it. If you have something that says enchanted creature gains flying, it'll get flying. Ooh, and that's a just nice fine. little flying elk. Yep, flying that's elk. That's where the Archon came from. Yeah. Yep, exactly that. 
Um, Grumgully the Generous. Don't take it, everybody. Just don't take it. Don't you, eat those mushrooms. You think it'll be a fun night at the Bad club. But news. Oof. And you can't refuse things from Grumgully. <laughs> wow. We'll get into that in a second. Uh, green, red one for a legendary creature goblin shaman. He's a 3-3. Three, three. Each other non-human creature you control enters the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on it. Does it matter what it is? Take it and be grateful. Yep. It's just me reading, though. Yeah, no, that's just flavor text. <laughs> I he want to cosplay as Grum Gully. Oh, man. <laughs> this is traditional art, and the piece is gorgeous and like $3,000. Oh, $3, is it dollars. really? Yeah. I really wish that I had the money to shell out for Grum Gully because, man, this art piece is great. <laughs> um, so, no, you can't refuse. You get a plus one plus one counter. It's not a choice. It's not a triggered ability. It's a replacement effect. Um, in addition, it sounds weird. Uh, what it means is that if it was entering with counters otherwise, it gets a bonus counter. If it wasn't entering with counters, it'll get one. Okay. It's just to make sure that it doesn't override the counters that it was already going to enter with. It was going to enter with counters. Sure. If you have a Grumgully on the battlefield and another one tries to enter the battlefield, the new Grumgully will get a counter from the old one. <laughs> <laughs> So Grumgully will give gifts to his future self before he dies. So generous. That's um, very and, nice. Well, then you get to choose which Grumgully keeps. So you get to choose to keep the old one that's a 3-3 three, three, or the new one that's a 4-4. Four, four. I take the 4-4, oh. four, four, Rob. Maybe you need I to attack. I take the 3-3 three, three because, you know what, being around in the... It means something. He was around before. Yeah, he, he doesn't have some He was there anymore, for probably. us for a while. Yeah. He's, he's been your friend. We you don't, don't need the new friends. hotness. Can you imagine this hat, though? I really love his hat. You want to make yourself a mushroom hat? Yeah, that is my favorite. Is that growing on his head? Like the you, hat? The you hat think is just, alive for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Does he take it off, do you think? No. No, I don't think it doesn't, he would it want him come to off. take it off. Yeah, no. <laughs> it's okay. Yep. He's a guy I want on my team, but I don't want to be anywhere near. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> is that a cloak made out of mushrooms, too? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. It's got a lot going on there. <laughs> Sorcerer's Broom. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's a two-cost artifact. Artifact Creature Spirit, it's a 2-1. Whenever you sacrifice another permanent, you may pay 3. If you do, create a token that's a copy of Sorcerer's Broom. So, uh, every broom copy that you make has this ability and can make more brooms. <laughs> so, if you have a broom and you sacrifice something and you get another broom, like say a food token, and you get another broom, they have to kill both brooms in order to stop you from making more brooms. It's really expensive to make brooms. Yeah. Yeah, this I, is not a pack rat. Yeah, I like simultaneously it's good and bad because it's a pack rat was an egregious mistake. Yes. Yeah. Too good. Uh, but it was awful. Good. at the same time, I feel bad because you've just spent like six mana to get a second broom out of a food token. Is it three? Yeah. To no, no, it's two to sacrifice a food token. Sorry. Yeah. So you spent five mana to get a broom out of a food. Uh, this is obviously it's, from Fantasia. Yeah. yeah. Which this well, one spooked me as a kid. Yeah. Well, Fantasia, like, Disney, uh, weirdly enough, most of Disney's stuff prior to, like, 1999 is public domain works. Oh. Like, th this is actually a story, a classic fantasy story huh. of of the Sorcerer's Apprentice. Fantasia is all animated oh, yeah, for that other makes things. Sense. Yeah. yeah. And so it's weird and frustrating that Disney keeps pushing public domain to be the same date. Like, 1921 is the public domain date and was for a very long time. Yeah. Like, Death of the author plus 70 years or something. Something like yeah. that, yeah. Yeah, it's insane. And so, uh, more stuff should enter public domain. Yeah. That's my wish. Fair enough. Um, and to have more brooms. And to have more brooms. I own five brooms. It's, it's very difficult <laughs> to, to have enough that brooms. That is a just, lot of you brooms. You just snap that off. Like, you just know in your head you have five brooms in your house. Yeah. I That's couldn't so tell you how many brooms. brooms I have. Yeah, you could. I could not. That's absurd. I think it's probably like four or five, but I don't know for what? sure. What? You have... all are broom wealthy. <laughs> well, so you're the broom one percent. It's probably true. <laughs> but like, you like have a garage broom. I have, have one broom. broom. You have the porch broom. Well, we have two garage brooms because we have the push broom and the regular broom, right? See. And Ruth and I each had two brooms when, before we united our stuff. So right, like, right, right. And you're not just gonna right. Like, and then we break and then one we bought, broom. And then we I bought a push broom this. so that we'd have one for we the garage. We need broom redistribution. <laughs> hey, redistribution. how many brooms do you have in your house? I know how yeah. many I have. It's one. <laughs> if I have you one have one broom, if you think you have a egregious number of brooms, please tweet at no, us one broom with the household. hashtag one broom household. <laughs> <laughs> one broom household. If you have more than twelve, you'll be able to defeat the broom dungeon when that comes up. <laughs> Trail of Crumbs. Mm -hmm. uh, green and one. Enchantment. 
When Trail of Crumbs enter the battlefield, create a food token. I love food. Uh, you find it right on the ground. It's naturally occurring. <laughs> Whenever you sacrifice a food, you may pay one mana. If you do, look at the top two cards of your library. You may reveal uh, two. Uh, you may reveal a permanent card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. Trail of Crumbs does not care who eats the food. If you eat your food or your goose eats your food. Uh, Trail of Crumbs will trigger. <laughs> and so Stinking goose. Yeah, whenever you sacrifice a food. Uh, so does not care which one, and then it'll trigger, and then you'll get to look and look at additional cards. So there's a lot of things that sacrifice food in this set. Most of the food makers are also food consumers on some level. Um, I mean... It's a true statement. I, I, look... <laughs> Look, I'm laying down super yeah. cold takes here. <laughs> like I am laying down like uh, like ice two week after takes. Thanksgiving turkey takes yeah. here. <laughs> and so yeah. Uh many things that make food will also eat the food for some kind of value. Anytime that they eat the food from other things, you'll get triggers. And if they eat multiple food at once, um, it'll trigger multiple times. Okay. All right. So if you have your troll king and he eats, you know, three food, well, you get three trail of crumbs triggers and you may get a whole pile of cards in your hand. Nice. Or you might find nothing. That's the problem with well, naturally occurring yeah. food. Um, bake into a pie. Black, black, two. Instant. Destroy target creature. Create a food token. Very straightforward. If the creature isn't there and this fails to resolve or it becomes an illegal target because it got protection or something, then you don't get a food. Can uh, I ask why that is based uh, on the way that this is templated? Uh, so destroy target creature. Uh, anytime that something has a number of targets, the... If the spell's targets are illegal at the time it goes to resolve, either because they're not there or they stop being the thing that you're expecting them to be or targeting them became illegal because they got hexproof or protection, then that thing just doesn't resolve. So the whole thing's out the yeah, window. Yeah, the whole thing's out the window if all of the targets are illegal. Oh, this, that's right. Yeah, this only okay. has one target. If it was destroy target creature, target player creates a food token, um, you would be really confused reading the card, but then you'd always get a food, yeah. basically. Yeah, okay. Um, for an example of a card that has a bizarre template like this, um, black XX make X zombies. What is it? Oh, I don't remember that far back anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh. Yeah. Target player makes X zombies and then, uh, target, pl uh, destroy target or deal damage to target creature with a little number of zombies that that player controls. Um, it's very weird because you're like, why would I ever want to give my opponent zombies? And you're like, well, cause it needed two targets. Yeah. Okay. I got it. Um, Seven dwarves. So this is a card that has seven different arts. Is that is that correct in Does the set? It? I don't know, but I I feel like I read it somewhere. So I don't. I I kind of want to um settle the rumor on that. <laughs> seven dwarves. MTG art. Great Google search. Yeah. Yeah. Just look at the card on um Scryfall. And then see how many... Well, it depends on whether or not they're doing the secret arts thing. Because Wizards oh, does that sometimes. Oh, you're right. Maybe they're secret. This only shows one print. It could be speculation Scryfall. that they have more than one art. I mean, that would be great. That's what I would want. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Anyway, sorry. But anyways, we got distracted by seven dwarves by asking how many Continue. dwarves there are. There are seven of them. You may have seven dwarves. Red and one for a 2-2 two -two creature dwarf. He doesn't have a job. I don't... Like, <laughs> this is a thing that they're doing sometimes. They just... They used to give creatures jobs, and this, this, is, a, this is a jobless dwarf. <laughs> um, seven dwarves gets plus one, plus one for each other creature named seven dwarves you control. A deck can have up to seven cards named seven dwarves. This applies in limited. Yeah. So uh, this is a weird line of text that we've never seen before, and it's not a common. Um, you have a cap on the number of copies of this that you can play in your deck. That is seven. If you open eight seven dwarves, because you're playing two at a giant, you get double sealed pools and that's possible uh you can only play seven of them in a single library well uh so be aware dang it my whole yep. plan's out the window now to play just mono dwarves i mean it's mono seven dwarves mono seven dwarves also if you're drafting um you're capped don't draft more than seven dwarves okay it won't matter yep wow uh the plus side in constructed you can play seven dwarves nice true i mean no one's gonna stop you yeah, no, well your common sense might stop. <laughs> they're not very good. <laughs> and they don't have a job. They're What do you no, want? They're the just shiftless dwarves. layabouts. You what? just want like this to say like dwarf, sleepy? 
<laughs> no, I want them to like, warrior. Oh, I see. Like, oh, yeah. uh, like oh, they, 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 they don't have a class. Normally things have race and class. Like I've got a lot of opinions on the creature types in this set. <laughs> uh, like why is peasant a random creature type? They added they added three creature types in this set. Noble, mouse, warlock. Mm, are uh, the mice rats? Aren't they no, rats? No, they're mouse. They're mouse. The mouse are mouse. The mouse are mouse. The mouse are mouse. We re- we uh, talked about this on the upkeep last week. Hey, if you want magic news, you can always check out the upkeep. They are the mice. Podcast. They are mouse yep. creature tokens. Yeah. Mouse. Welcome to 1997. <laughs> we mice. I wish that was what Rob said any time yeah. he was surprised by something. Any time. Yeah. No, it, well, because so the standardized creature types are a thing that's been important in magic for a long time. Right. Yeah. yeah. They, they did a grand creature type update that consolidated creature types and made root water alligator into a crocodile. Yeah. And like it, Soria of the Falconer stopped boosting falcons and she boosts birds. They removed yeah. they removed a supported type that there was a lord for. And now they're going. But cr- now, now all of they're going are rogue with the mice. Yeah. They, they added they added. OK, so that the, there's four. There's peasant. There's noble. There's mouse. And there's warlock. Yeah. Which is our warlocks in this set? Cool. Yeah. Um, and they're probably not going to go back and make all the old witches warlocks. No. They're just going to no. say this is an Eldraine specific thing. The witches here are warlocks. <laughs> Elsewhere, they might not be. Welcome to 1997. <laughs> but th- that's what, in 1997, they would print like random one off creature types if something sounded <laughs> important or exciting. Yeah. You know, yeah. brush wag. Like, uh, hey, I'm so, into it. Yeah. I mean, it's it makes the cards sound more interesting and exciting, but like. Uh, it makes it less consistent and it means accurate that, well it engages tribal decks less right like if yeah. seven dwarves is a warrior you could play it in your warriors deck but right now it's dwarves only yeah i, well, I see your problem yeah. depaul is a fan y'all remember depaula no yeah depaula pilot exemplar yeah oh yeah. depaula yeah yeah she yeah. liked dwarves yeah, that's yeah true. she likes dwarves that's there's true. there's there's a handful of dwarf lords throughout the history of magic but like yeah. The the reason that you have race class combinations is so that creatures have jobs and they connect into more decks. Here's the problem though, none of those seven dwarves they're were minors. warriors. They're, they're all minors. minors. Yeah, sure. So you you pick something that's more minorly. Archaeologist. Dwarf. <laughs> I don't so know. that's definitely a creature type. Well, what would it be? I don't even know creature what it would type be. Creature type archaeologist. <laughs> Rob's on a mission now. Yep. There's a lot. Um, well, Rob is on this mission. I'm yeah. just going to let you know that. Thank you, by the way, for going through all of this for us. That co- that yeah. concludes our yeah, list this, of. Yeah of cards that we had specific notes on. Yeah. But if you have more questions, if you're like, Rob did not answer a question about a card that I have, an interaction that I had, uh, it can include cards from other sets because Rob knows everything. You can go to our <laughs> YouTube video. on <laughs> thir- many Thursdays is the day we post this episode on YouTube. And uh, write a little comment and ask Rob a question. Ooh, jellyfish. There we go. Mm. Oh, dwarf jellyfish. dwarf jellyfish. That's not a job. How about rogue? How- dwarf rogue? Uh, uh, that, no, that, that would no. actually enable Robin Hood pretty they're well. They're kind of good, though. Um, but you can ask him a question. Um, he'll go in there for up to a week after. Is that what you normally say? Answering yeah, people's I, questions? Yeah, I usually cut it off at a week. Yeah, so after a week um, after the publish date, you can go in there and um, ask, and he'll come just in and Just citizen. Yeah, citizen, citizen wouldn't be terrible. <laughs> Dwarf <laughs> citizen. Peasant would also have been fine since they added peasant. Uh, yeah. Like, I, it's a it's a bad job, but it's at least a job. Um, I like citizen though. <laughs> dwarf citizen. I I have I have strong opinions on creature types. I've got lots that I'm frustrated by. <laughs> like there's the um, there's the legendary uh, there's the legendary dreadnought in um, in Dominaria. Mm-hmm. Why isn't that a legendary? Juggernaut. Why are Dreadnought and Juggernaut different creature types? I don't know, man. I can't answer that I question can't answer for, that you, for you, Rob. Either. I want to build a Juggernaut EDH deck, and there's no legendary Juggernaut. And they printed a legendary creature that must attack each turn if able, and it isn't a Juggernaut. I'm scout. sorry. That's kind of like a minor, you know, a scout underground. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There we go. Dwarf I scout. like that. Dwarf scout. Yeah. yeah. But they're, like, there are options, and they could have just given it a new creature type just to be cool, right? Like... There's a lot of survivors a creature type inexplicably. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm just unhappy. I want people to have jobs. <laughs> I, I want to be yeah. a job creator, not a job destroyer. <laughs> and so, yeah. Well, there you go. Yep. Uh, thank you so much, Rob, for helping us out. You're um, working our way through Throne of Eldraine. 
Yep. And uh, we love to see your pre-release pools, any of the decks that you build, anything that, that's cool that you pulled. So please tweet at us at GLHF Magic if you're heading out to your pre-release this weekend. We love seeing that kind of stuff. Yeah. And letting us know like what cards overperformed for you, which ones didn't. And um, yeah, next week we'll have our vlog up mm. on our YouTube channel from our pre-release and a whole bunch more fun stuff too. Yeah. We're going to take a moment to thank our other sponsor of the show, Ultra Pro. That's right. If you've looked at some of this Eldraine art and you're like, I cannot wait to get that Me. on a playmat. I cannot wait to get that on like a beautiful banner, maybe even Me. or a deck box or some Me. sleeves. Yeah. Ultra Pro is going to be your place to go. They print beautiful playmats. Yeah. And et cetera's. And et cetera's. <laughs> and et cetera's. <laughs> That's it, the official thing on their website. Yes. Yep. If you like magic stuff and you like the... <laughs> Seb McKinnon did like seven incredible pieces in this Oh, set. absolutely. Yes, and of course. Non-stop bangers. Yeah. Uh, and they're going to have that all over the place. Yeah. Because the art is so good. Get, I, yeah. get in there. Get it. Get in there and get it. And get thank you. Get in there and get it. Ultra Pro for being our sponsor. For the most important moment in Throne of Eldraine, the crowning of the cutest card and the grossest card. That's right. I'm excited. All right, which one do you want to start with, Rob? You get to choose. I so I want to push off cutest card for a second okay. because I like to build tension on it. I want to hear right. grossest card. <laughs> okay, so I have I am, two. I'm so excited about grossest card. I have card. two. All right. Okay. The the first is Reaper of Night, Reaper which is a black card. It's not the Reaper himself, though he's spooky. Um, it's whatever thing he rides in the background <laughs> that <laughs> appears to have seven faces. Oh, seven sick. terrible, disgusting it really faces. Does. Oh, it's awful. They're Don't just jammed what, together. Like, yes. It's like instead of having a head, it has a lump with seven faces on yuck. it. But it's disgusting. This and is the most reaction I've ever had to your gross card because that it it is awful. Horrible. And they must have given something specific in the art direction to generate that. Oh, yeah. He right. rides upon a horrible monster is usually just like some misshapen beast. No, uh, it, it, it has the faces a- of all of his dead loved ones or something. Like uh, it is it is a real nightmare. Um and then Tempting Witch, who I think oh, yeah. has a necklace of several <laughs> arms. I remember Tempting this one from earlier. I, I believe is yeah. is wearing a necklace are of those arms. Children's arms? Yeah, because those, I mean, those like are that. sized to be adult arms. No, I think those are that kid they arms. They are. They, those are kids' arms. Are they those are. A- are, not are you chill. tempted by children's arms? No. <laughs> oh, uh, even if it's the most glorious necklace and it's no. at the height of fashion, please no. do not wear no. arms around your neck. I was no. expecting one of your honor ups to be spore cap spider. Oh, that's bad. Also, did not like, see that one. It's, but it's no. a spider that is covered no. with evil mushrooms. No, 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 no. <laughs> like also, this, yep. This looks like exactly the kind Hard of thing pass. that freaks you out. Gross. Yep. Gross, gross, gross. Get it out of here. That's disgusting. Um, I didn't look through the green cards because usually green is okay, but... That is disgusting. Well, those are three Horrible disgusting cards. cards. Yeah. Well done, Eldraine. All right, let's uh, move on over to cutest card. Mm. Uh, yeah. As usual, we're going to start with our runners up, of which, of course, there are many in this set. Yeah. Throne of Eldraine is a high cute density. Uh, <laughs> I agree with that. A high CD level. Um, Frogify yeah. is a definite runner up. Frog yep. with a cute little crown. Yeah. Rob wants Wolf's Quarry to be a runner up. They're three little pigs. This is yeah. three, little pigs. three little so pigs. Cute. They're so cute. <laughs> <laughs> Glass Casket is runner-up for me, also known as Fox in a Box. Um, it's uh, really adorable, but I just couldn't get over how sad it was that that yeah. fox was locked in that little casket. So it's very cute, but also sad. Oh, poor buddy. Another runner-up, we've got two um, non-live, not li- like alive. What am I trying to say? Um, there's no blood in either of these things. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Corridor monitor is a little lock that has come to life and yes. grown legs. He wrote Non-biological? Cute. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. And clockwork servant is, I think, even cuter than the um, than the monitor. What? Which is a cute little no. clock This thing man. is creepy. Megan's out on clockwork. Yeah, servant. this thing is creepy. Look, look, at, look at its him. creepy eyes. <laughs> I think it's cute. I don't, are those eyes? That looks like a gear shift. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> But, of course, nobody could actually beat the cutest card in the set, which is, I'm going to use the word heinous. It's heinously cute because I I get angry. It's so cute. Weaselback Redcap is the winner for Throne of Eldraine. Congratulations. Weaselback Redcap. You finally gave in. They uh, they pushed their They pushed it, and I went for it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's true. It is... It is so cute. Uh, that weasel is so happy to be carrying around that little yes. whatever goblin thingy. Yeah, it's a goblin. Yeah. Oh, 
It's, it's a so happy cute. little weasel. If you had a pet weasel the size of a dog that looked like yes. this, you would love it to death. I would, yeah. and I would ride yeah. it into the sunset every day. Cute. That's this episode of Good Luck High Five and once again. What an episode it's been! Absolutely, thank you to Judge Rob thank for being you. here. Yeah, I love coming on the show. Out. Such a fan. We love having you yes. on the show. Thank you so much for all of this guidance as people go into their pre-release this weekend. So hopefully you go out there to sling some spells a lot more confident because you've listened to this. And uh, if you feel like you've gotten something from this episode or indeed any of our episodes, please head on over to our Patreon, Patreon.com/slash/GLHFMagic, and become a member today help support the things that you love it'll make you feel good i guarantee it yeah. and uh you'll and be you can come back. to that hangout with us on thursday yes sir hang out on thursday is always super fun um and yeah extra bonuses as well after you've been a patron for a little bit uh big thanks once again of course to ultra pro and card kingdom for being two excellent and awesome uh, companies in the magic community we wouldn't partner with them if they weren't and they are I'm so such a fan of them. Yeah. yeah yeah there you go get um, out there and have a great pre-release weekend team absolutely, yeah. absolutely. enjoy having have enjoy fun. your things and Help enjoy other people, enjoy other things. people enjoying yes. things yes. absolutely yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.